Welcome everyone, I'm Dale and this is Cinema Historia. An astronaut, crew, a sudden crash landing, and a planet from a distant future. This week we're going back to 1968 for a science fiction film called Planet of the Apes, starring Charlton Heston, Roddy McDowell, Kim Hunter, and Linda Harrison. And this is directed by Franklin J. Schaffner. So where does our story begin this week? Well, our story begins with astronauts Taylor, played by Charlton Heston, Landon, Dodge, and their spacecraft that left Earth in 1972. Now traveling in the year 2673, the three astronauts partake in a confined and controlled sleep. Taylor, Landon, and Dodge are suddenly awakened from deep hibernation after a near light speed space voyage. Their spaceship crashes into a lake on an unknown planet, which Taylor estimates places them in Orion's Bellatrix system, 300 light years from their home solar system. Before they abandon their sinking vessel, Taylor reads the ship's chronometer as November 25th, 3978, 2006 years after their 1972 departure. Due to the time dilation, however, the three astronauts have aged slightly less than one year. After their life raft reaches land, the men travel through a desolate wasteland, coming across scarecrow-like figures and a freshwater lake with lush vegetation. Recovering their stolen clothing after a swim, Taylor, Landon, and Dodge follow primitive mute humans to a cornfield where a gathering of humans are picking and collecting food. Soon after, armed gorillas raid the cornfield, shooting Taylor in the throat as he and other mutes are captured. Meanwhile, Dodge is killed and Landon is rendered unconscious while Taylor is taken to Ape City amongst the chaos. Two chimpanzees, animal psychologist Zira, played by Kim Hunter, and Surgeon Galen save Taylor's life, though his throat injury renders him temporarily mute. Taylor is placed in a cage with a captive female, whom he later names Nova, played by Linda Harrison. He observes an advanced society of talking apes with a strict military force of gorillas who hunt primitive humans, either killed, enslaved, or used in scientific experiments. Taylor tries to convince Dr. Zero, Zira and her fiance Cornelius, played by Roddy McDowell, that he arrived in a spacecraft and is just as intelligent as they are. Believing no one can survive in the area they call the Forbidden Zone, orangutan superior Dr. Zayas protests Zero's theories of a man from another planet. Briefly escaping, Taylor is recaptured in the process, reveals he can speak, which alarms the apes immensely. So, is the ape society a theocracy, considering all humans vermin? Does Zira and Cornelius believe Taylor and help him escape? And if so, is something revealed far past the Forbidden Zone? Based on the 1963 science fiction novel Planet of the Apes by French author Pierre Baoul, this film was a box office hit, earning a lifetime domestic gross of $33.3 million. With an 86% rating from the film critic Rotten Tomatoes, this film received four nominations, two Oscar nominations, and six wins, including a 1969 honorary award win for John Chambers for his outstanding makeup achievement in the movie. Planet of the Apes' success launched a franchise, including four sequels, a television series, an animated series, comic books, various merchandising, and in 2008, Empire Magazine selected the film as one of the 500 greatest movies of all time. And that's a huge honor. I remember when this film came out in 1968. Great film. <laughs> and our trivia question this week. Was there a prankster amongst the actors that starred in our film? Was there a prankster amongst the actors that starred in our film? So a little more history and the answer to our trivia question coming up next.
Now a matte painting was used to create a scene in our film. What are matte paintings and who was the artist? Well, that's the subject of this week's history. So a matte painting is a painted representation of a landscape set or distant location that allows filmmakers to create the illusion of an environment that is not present at the filming location. The effect is seamless and creates environments that would otherwise be impossible or expensive to film. Traditionally, matte paintings were made by artists using paints or pastels on large sheets of glass placed in front of the camera, integrating with the live action footage. The first known matte painting shot was made in 1907 by Norman Don, who improvised the crumbling California missions by painting them on glass for the movie Missions of California. Some of the most notable film matte paintings are The View of Skull Island in King Kong in 1933, Dorothy's Approach to the Emerald City in The Wizard of Oz in 1939, and the iconic image of the Statue of Liberty in Planet of the Apes in 1968. And this image was painted by Czech French American artist Emil Cosa Jr. Cosa was born in Paris, France on November 28, 1903, coming to Los Angeles with his family in 1907, where he studied in fine arts, traveling between Paris and California. After working as a mural painter for churches and auditoriums in 1933, Cosa became art director of the special effects department at the newly formed 20th Century Pictures, designing their distinctive logo for the studio. Cosa remained art director at the studio for a total of 35 years, being the first recipient of an Academy Award for Special Effects for his work on the 1963 film Cleopatra. During 1967, Cosa completed a matte painting of a distressed Statue of Liberty for the film Planet of the Apes. This shot was achieved with a very detailed painting on glass with transparent areas through which live action could be filmed. The extra smooth glass surface permitted great detail without the surface grain of canvas or paper. The image became one of the most iconic and best known images of filmmaking and popular culture when the film hit the theaters in 1968. Unfortunately, Emil Cosa Jr. passed away just months after the successful film release, leaving behind a legacy of some of the most recognizable effects and images of the movie industry. Just amazing. And the, the answer to our trivia question this week, was there a prankster amongst the actors who starred in our film? Yes, it certainly was. And it was Roddy McDowell who played Dr. Cornelius in our film. The makeup team consisted of over 80 makeup artists and McDowell reportedly became a merry prankster with the makeup. McDowell would drive home with the makeup on, shocking some of the drivers on the freeway. And while doing the 1974 Planet of the Apes TV series, Roddy surprised Carol Burnett when he showed up on her show in full Galen makeup while she was taping her intro talking to the audience. Pretty funny. I remember watching the TV series in the mid 70s for Planet of the Apes. It was a pretty cool series. I'd like to take this time to give a big thank you to my new subscribers. Thanks for jumping on board and supporting my channel. And for everyone else viewing this week, Thanks for watching everyone and I hope to see you back next week.